This is our last Sunday looking at Judges, and uh, it definitely has been uh, kind of a rough and tumble few weeks uh, talking about the, uh, this period in Israel's history, um, kind of like the Old West, lots of uh, fighting, lots of lawlessness, and then into the midst of that, <clears throat> here comes the law. And it is uh, a judge appointed by God to kind of take care of some things. And it's, it's an unlikely person taking on the task. Let's review and see if uh, you have learned some new judges this week. So who was the first week that we talked about? Deborah, Deborah yeah. And what made her unlikely was that she was a woman and she was uh, running the show. Remember, she was so famous and beloved that the oldest poem in the Bible is about her. And so that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. And then the second week, who were we looking at? Gideon. Gideon, that's right. He was the least of the least tribe and uh, nothing special supposedly, but God called him to work. He's the one that put the fleece out and, to see if there was dew on it, and this whole discernment process. He was the one that led the troops that God kept sending people home and he ended up with a bunch of dog lappers to to do the uh the fighting and then last week a kind of a tough name to remember you remember who it was jephthah yeah and he was uh he was kind of uh uh kicked out of his house by his his stepbrothers and um he became an outlaw and he had a gang and everything and yet he ended up doing the work uh leading the troops and uh, he ended up sacrificing his daughter. Really sad. So, all these unlikely people. But today, perhaps the most unlikely story of them all. And it's quite a character that we're talking about. Now, before I tell you who it is, I've got a quiz for you. Online, uh, type the answer online and let us see if you've got what you've got for an answer. I want you to think about it. What is the name of your brand of luggage that you have at home? Samsonite, I heard it. I, I've got Samsonite too. If you don't have Samsonite, you need to get rid of your luggage and go get some Samsonite. Because Samsonite is named after Samson, our judge for the day, because it's so strong. And uh, Samson was so strong, really strong, like, like Incredible Hulk kind of strong. Larger than life, kind of strong. Actually, uh, some scholars have drawn parallels between Samson and Hercules. Kind of the same kind of things, uh, tall tales uh, about, about somebody. Uh, almost a mythological figure. Um, more than the rest of the judges, the story of Samson really seems larger than life. And we don't know if there really was a Samson, but if there really was a Samson, uh, he could have been this tough, macho warrior. And then as the stories kept being told, people love to tell additional stories and tall tales about this figure. And, and we get this, um, this exaggerated character. And uh, it's... it's uh, it's almost like a comic book kind of character. Um, and, and, uh, and this week we hear about his mighty deeds, kind of like Paul Bunyan kind of a, a character, his mighty deeds against the Philistines. And remember, we had a different, uh, a different opponent for each of these judges. Just shows how crazy that time was. Here's the Philistines. And, and this is Samson. Now, before I tell you about Samson and what he does, let me tell you about his background a little bit. Uh, as, as Anne said, his parents were visited by an angel who told, who, who told them to, to have this kid, and they said to make this kid a Nazarite. Samson was a Nazarite. Now, what is a Nazarite? Well, it was sort of like a religious social club like maybe fca is sort of like fca or something like that and 
and kids were sometimes dedicated into this, but it was also by choice. They would just choose to be part of this group. And what it was was a, a group that these people kept their purity in their devotion to God. And part of that was to never have alcohol touching their lips. So they, they, they abstained for any alcohol. I, I think they would frequently wear like white gowns and things like that. But the way you could tell a Nazarite, the, the most visible way you could identify somebody as a Nazarite was that they never cut their hair. And that was Samson. He was a Nazarite. He never cut his hair. That's where the long hair comes from. And um, uh, apparently, in Samson's case, it gives him superhuman strength. We first realize that he is superhuman, and maybe he realizes his great strength this time when a lion appears on the path in front of him and charges at him, and he the lion jumps at him, and he just rips it apart, kills the lion, just like that. And another time, we heard this in the scripture, did you hear this? He takes 300 foxes, he rounds up, 300, who rounds up 300 foxes? Well, apparently Samson does. He takes these foxes, he ties their tails together with a torch, lights the torch and sets them loose, and they go running through the fields of the Philistines, destroying their wheat. You know what Samson does? He kills a lot of Philistines. I mean, it's one of the main things he does. He goes from one crazy situation to another where the solution to the problem, or at least his solution, is to kill more Philistines. And after a while, he's on their radar, and they want him dead. So that's the big conflict in this story. Now, spoiler alert, but they succeed. In the end, he dies. And, um, and part of it's because of his own fatal flaws, and he has several of them. But you know what his biggest fatal flaw was, more than anything else? The ladies. Samson loved the ladies. He, um, he was the epitome of an unlikely hero. He's this carousing man with superhuman strength who just kills all the time, and he looks like Fabio. I made up the Fabio part, but that's how I picture him, you know long hair and so here's the first time we really meet him the first time we meet him he's a young adult I don't know what age but he is making googly eyes at a woman it's a Philistine woman these are the enemies for 40 years the Philistines have been attacking and conquering the Israelites but Samson sees this woman, and he's got to have her. And he says to his parents, I got to have her. And they say, but she's a Philistine. And he says, I got to have her. And so they make arrangements with the other family. And they set it up, a wedding between him and a Philistine. Now, at the wedding he starts taunting the Philistine men who are there. 30 men. 30 Philistine men. And he, he has a riddle for them. And it's a riddle they can never possibly solve because it's something that he just saw on the side of the road. A, a, a bee's nest in a carcass. So he's, he's got this impossible riddle and they make a bet about whether they can figure it out or not. And uh, they can't until they enlist the help of his new wife. She's really on their side. And so he coaxes it, she coaxes it out of him. 
and he, he tells the riddle, and she tells the Philistines, and then the Philistines come, and they've solved the riddle, and that means that, that Samson has lost this bet, and what he had bet was uh, clothes for these 30 Philistines. That's what he has to supply. And you know how he gets the clothes? He goes and kills 30 other Philistine men and takes their clothes and give it to, to these men. This is ridiculous. But that's how he solves the dilemma. He, he, has, he has women problems all the way through. You know, uh, he, comes, he leaves for a long time, comes back. He has basically abandoned this new wife and uh, hasn't come to see her. Her dad thinks that he doesn't want her, so he marries the girl off to somebody else, and then more problems ensue. And so that relationship falls apart. The second of the three women that we hear him uh, dealing with is a prostitute. We don't know her name or anything. We just know that Samson is with a prostitute in town, and some Philistines have figured out that he's there, and they, they, they're hiding behind the gate of the city. And Samson figures out that they're there, and his way to deal with this problem is he rushes towards the gate with his strength and picks up the gate and carries it with him outside of town and says, oh, were you hiding behind this? The most famous woman that Samson deals with, do you know her name? Yes, she now has a popular radio show on at night. Only some of you get that, but there is a Delilah radio show. This is after he's been a judge for 40 years. He meets her, and he falls hard. He is in love with her. She's only after one thing, though. The secret of his superhuman strength. She wants to get rid of it because she's in cahoots with the other Philistines. So she just starts asking him about the secret of his strength. And, and he never gives her a straight answer. He'll say fake things like, well, having my arms bound, that, that gets rid of my strength. And so she tells some Philistines, they break in and bind up his arms, and then he breaks free because he was lying. And then she's mad, why do you lie to me? It's a very unhealthy relationship. And then he says, if you braid my hair, I won't have any powers. So guess what she does? She braids his hair, and he lets her do this. And, of course, he still has his powers. And she pouts, and, you know, if you loved me, you'd tell me the secret to your strength. And eventually he does. It's my hair. If you cut my hair, I don't have any strength. And, well, guess what happens? She cuts his hair. They, his hair is cut. His strength is gone. And uh, Philistines come in and capture him. Then they, they take his eyes out and blind him. And they throw him in jail. And then they bring him uh, to the palace where all these Philistines are gathered, like an arena full of Philistines, and they put him out in the middle to entertain them, dance, you know, that kind of thing. So Samson prays to God for strength one more time. It says his hair is starting to come back, you know, he's got a buzz cut or something. But he... he he prays for strength one more time, and then he gets it. He feels the strength all in a rush. Here's this palace filled with Philistines. Samson grabs onto one pillar and then another pillar and pulls them down, and the whole roof comes down and kills all of the Philistines and himself. Kind of violent isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is PG-13 or R-rated stuff. It's also a little bit fun. 
You know, it's, it's like this violent adventure that we read about, the adventures of, of Samson. The question is, what does it mean for us? What is redeeming about this whole story? There's a guy who kills thousands of Philistines and is pretty much a womanizer. Well, amen to that. Do we need to make up a moral? You know, do we need to, to make up some meaning that may not be here in this? Maybe it's just a story, just a, an adventure story they told back then. Mindless entertainment like the Incredible Hulk. Well, I guess this does kind of give us that larger window on the world from, from back then. Even if it's a tall tale, there's some glimpse of what life would be like in this rough and tumble past. But I don't think that's enough. I do think, though, that there is one thing. There's one thing that we could point to, and that's the hair. Do you really think the hair was the source of Samson's power? I mean, it, it sure sounds like that going through, but at the end, he did not have big, long locks of Fabio hair. When he called on God, his strength returned, but it wasn't hair that did it. It was God who gave him power. You and I also have access to God's power in our lives, but we can make the mistake of saying other things are the reason for our power. Some of us say our money gives us power, or our status, or how much we can bench press. I've never used that one. How much influence we have, or even how fantastic our hair looks. But we know something that Samson might not have known back then. We, we have the benefit of, of time to help us understand that power comes from God. That real power comes from Jesus Christ. And it's up to us to use what we've been given. Now, I can't say I'm a real fan of how Samson used what he had been given. He did not make a lot of great choices in my book. I mean, I guess he was faithful to God in that he was attacking the enemy, you know, but in terms of uh, wise decisions and faithful decisions of how he used his strength, not as much. When we can let go of the earthly desires that fill us up and tether us down and when we can selfishly selflessly respond to the god the the call that god puts into our lives that's when we get to see what real power looks like that's the kind of power that with faith can move mountains and and that's the kind of strength in people that they don't name luggage after, they name churches after. Now the time of, of the judges is long past and we're done with it now. Um, but God still calls people. Even short-haired people. Even bald people, you know who you are. The God who has numbered every hair on your head is calling you will you show the strength to say yes amen